Good morning. It's Miss Jenny here at the Market Heights Public Library. And as some of you already know, we were gifted monarch caterpillars to raise. I want to thank my friends Kim and Ruby for sharing your caterpillars, your enclosures, milkweed, and even some fully formed chrysalides or chrysalises. Uh, this is my first time fostering monarchs and I've learned quite a bit in the last few days. I've gotten lots of information from my Lepidopterus friends. That's a fancy word for people who collect and study moths and butterflies. I've gotten some helpful uh, information from online support groups, from blogs, and from online resources like monarchwatch.org, and of course from books here at the library. Uh, you might ask yourself, Miss Jenny, why would you bother taking caterpillars inside and why not just let nature do the work? And that's a good question. Uh, the main reasons people help raise butterflies is sometimes their main food source, which is milkweed, is it grows near farm crops and is accidentally sprayed by pesticides or harsh chemicals that can kill the caterpillars or kills the plant. Another reason is sometimes caterpillars become prey to other animals. Sometimes they fall victim to parasites. And you know, if they don't do very well and they're not very successful, that's not good because butterflies are important pollinators that help flowers grow. Monarch caterpillars go through an interesting life with a lot of changes. Uh, after mating, the female butterfly lays her eggs on the, the milkweed plant. Once the eggs hatch, the caterpillars start eating. They go through five stages of molting their skin. Those special stages of growth are called instars. And the fifth stage of the caterpillar is where they're like the caterpillar in Eric Carle's story, the very hungry caterpillar. They, they get very hungry, they eat and eat and eat. And then finally they climb to the top of the enclosure and they hang upside down in the shape of a J. And I just found out last night that they spin a little bit of silk from their mouth and then they wiggle their bottom in the silk they've spun and they hang upside down. And that's when they have their final molt of their caterpillar skin. And it looks like they're doing a little dance or what my friend Ruby calls the chrysalis boogie. And they, they start to turn into this soft green kind of blob. And after a little bit, that blob turns into a pretty hardened green chrysalis with little golden flecks. And after several days, the chrysalis will start to look like it's turning black, but it's turning clear or translucent. And the fully formed butterfly will emerge and it'll hang there for a little while and pump some fluid from its abdomen into its wings. It'll release the rest of the fluid out in a reddish brown um, looking liquid and then shortly after, they'll be ready to fly. And you can take them outside and release them on a flower or um, let them fly off into the air and land on a tree where they can sun and dry their wings and get ready for the really interesting lives they're gonna lead. Today, I'm going to take some of our larger caterpillars that are in our small enclosure and move them to a larger enclosure because I get the feeling some of these guys are ready to go. And I'm gonna share with you a picture of the different size caterpillars we have. It's pretty amazing how they start to, they start in really tiny and they get so big at the end. When we got started, we counted about nine caterpillars. Now I'm going to show you, we've got nine caterpillars in this enclosure. You can see inside of there. And then, We've got about four little ones hiding in here. And one of them looks like he's hanging off to the side because he's probably going to molt or shed his skin. And that's our check-in with our caterpillars today. See you next time.